Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is Mathematical and Computational Thinking, Level 1, Qualitative and Quantitative Data. The icon that represents this practice includes both math and computational symbols. Computation or computers will be important a little bit later, but you always want to start by identifying what's the phenomena that you're going to use mathematical thinking, in this case, on. And you can do that in two ways. We can start to gather data, so data on the phenomena that is quantitative in nature, and then we can also gra graph that data. And so we can have a representation that is a graphical representation. So the first thing you always want to do as you're using this practice is to identify the phenomena that you're going to investigate. But it begins by just gather gathering some data on that phenomena. We want to make sure that in addition to qualities, it has the quantities of the phenomena. And that eventually leads to a graph. So after watching this video, you should be able to do mathematical thinking around something like loose change or the different types of weather in a month. I'm going to start by showing you my thinking around these colored blocks, and then you'll have a chance to do the same with the parts of a Lego. So let me clean this up and then we'll get started. Okay, so let's say the phenomena that I'm going to investigate are these colored blocks. The first thing I want to do is identify that. So the first thing I've done is identify the phenomena. The next thing I want to do is start gathering some data, or I can eventually use this as evidence on the phenomena. And so what are some things that I notice? I notice some qualities. I notice qualities like it's mostly just covered in black paint. There's blue on these ones, red on these ones. They have different shapes. But everything I'm saying right now is data that is qualitative in nature. So it's non-number data. And so what becomes important when we're doing science is to quantify that data. So it means to add a number to it. And so let me organize these and then I'll show you how to create a data table that is quantitative in nature. Okay, so this is the phenomena. What I'm going to do is put together a simple data table in here. It'll have qualities of these objects, but it'll also have quantities. So let me fill that out. So in my data table, we're going to have this quality of color, but then we're also going to have quantity, which is the number of each of those. And so let me fill that out on my data table. Okay, so in my data table, I have both qualitative data, that's the color, and it's the color of the shape on the front. So we've got blue, we've got red, and we've got yellow. And I also have quantitative data. That's going to be data that includes a number. So there are five blue, or three red, or there are six of the yellow. And so what I've created now is a data table that contains quantity. If you really want to add rigor to the science that you're doing, then add numbers to it, add math to it, which is what science is really built on. Now the next thing I want to do is sometimes when you look at a data table, it just doesn't show you graphically like how much quantity there is. And so what I'm going to do is take these and reorganize it into a graph. Let me show you a simple way to do that. Okay, now I have a simple graph. The simple graph is a graphical representation. You can see that I wrote both my qualitative data and my quantitative data on the two axes of the graph. And so this would be the color, blue, red, yellow, and then the quantity. You can see I had to add a few numbers, but they correspond to the numbers. So I can read it across. So this would be three red, for example, or this is six yellow. So on a good graph, what you always have is both both types of data on, on one graph. The one thing that I'm missing though is I'm missing a title. And a quick way to write a title is to just write what's on your y-axis or the, the vertical axis and then what's on the x-axis. So let me write that. Okay, so now I've got a title. The way, a quick way to do the title is to just to talk about what's on the y-axis, which is the quantity of blocks by the color. And so this is a simple graph. One neat thing about this is it wouldn't take me too long to develop a different graph. So let me do that.
Okay, so in this next graph, what I have is I have the shape on the x-axis and quantity on the y, and my graph is quantity of blocks by shape. So I could read it across, so I have seven of the circles and I have seven of the squares. So I could now go from a graph back to a data set, or I could go from a data set to a graph. And so that's how you do mathematical thinking. What I'm going to do is clean this up and I'm going to give you a chance to create some data sets and graphs of your own. Okay, for the next example, what we're going to do is try to look at quantitative data from this Lego car. And so the first thing I want to do is define the phenomena. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to take it apart so you can see all the different parts of it. So I'm just going to take a moment to pull all the pieces apart. Okay, so all, those are all the parts of the Lego car. What I would encourage you to do now is pause the video, first create a data table, and then make sure that it includes quantities, and then create a graph. Then unpause the video, come back, and let's see how our mathematical thinking compares. Okay, so the first thing I would want to do is I would want to talk about my data table. So how am I going to organize the data table? Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to identify the qualities. What are the qualities of all these Lego pieces? So let me do that. And now I want to define what's the quantity. How many are there? Okay, so now I've created a data table. It's got quantitative data, which is going to be the numbers of each, and then it also has qualitative data. What is the actual piece? And so the next thing I can do now that I have quantitative data is I can create a graph that shows those quantities. So let me do that. Okay, so now I'm showing the amount. So I've got the qualities along the bottom, axle, wheel, white brick, and steering wheel. And now I'm showing the quantities. So I could look at this graph and I could say, oh, it's easy to see that you have two axles or you have four wheels. What's the one thing that I'm missing on this graph is I'm missing a title. Remember, when you're coming up with a title, you just talk about what's on the vertical and then what's on the horizontal axis. Okay, so my title is the quantity of Lego by the Lego piece. So that's my graph. And so now I could take that graph and then read specific quantities back. And so that's all mathematical thinking is when you get started in science. The big thing that really makes this important is the quantity. Making sure that you're grabbing quantitative data is super important. So now that I've done this, I'm going to leave some uh, slides below where you could do the same thing with loose change or you could even do uh, the um, amount of different types of weather in a month in New York. But that's mathematical thinking. All you do is make sure you're thinking quantitatively and you're well on the pathway to doing good mathematical thinking and I hope that's helpful.